Today, as you listen to this teaching by Pastors Ralph and Joanne Hone, we hope you'll enjoy it and learn some practical ways to walk into the awesome life God has for you. For more information and for more free teaching, visit our website, www.tapintothesource.com. Uh, but no, we're just so glad you're here. And uh, today we're actually having communion, which is going to is always just a really powerful time. And there's something we wanted to share with you. So once again, we're going to stir things up a little bit, and we're going to share something now um, before we, we continue in our series. And um, that's something called Heart for the House. We just want to talk to you for this, about just a few minutes. And we're talking to both campuses on this one. But Ephesians 2, verse 19 to 22, and I don't have this up on the screen, so just listen. It says, And so you are no longer called outcasts and wanderers, but citizens with God's people, members of God's holy family, and residents of his household. You are being built on a solid foundation. The message of the prophets and the voices of God's chosen emissaries with Jesus, the anointed himself, the precious cornerstone. The building is joined together stone by stone, all of us chosen and sealed in him, rising up to become a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are being built together, creating a sacred dwelling place among you where God can live in the spirit. You know, in the Old Testament, God resided in a building. In the New Testament or the New Covenant, after Jesus, he resides in us, which is so beautiful. So what it's saying here now is that we have become a family. We have become, we as people have become the household of God. We are, um, as we get together, we are a family. We have become that house of God because we are the people. Not because of the building, but because of the people. Um, We are brothers and sisters. The second part of that is the the fact that God's temple is in us, but... As a family together, we have a dwelling place, right? Which is this church building. It's our dwelling place as a church family. How many of you guys have a dwelling place? Right? Yes. How many of you have family? Right. Now, your family member, that the dwelling place you have is not a part of your, like it's not the family itself, right? It's just your dwelling place. It's not who your family is but it's where you reside, it's where you find protection, it's where you, you live together, it gives you safety, it gives you protection, etc., etc. right? So we can define the fact that the house you live in is not your family, but it's the place your family resides. So in your right? family, do you care for your own home? Um, does, it, does everyone have a part to play? The answer is yes, and it's the same thing in the church. We must care for our home. Each one of us has a part to play uh, for this church family, and it requires, unfortunately, maintenance. And Winnipeg, we're gonna we're gonna talk to you a little bit later. We're gonna talk a little bit to the Florida crowd, but well, first of all, in that you know, uh, we we want to start something called um, Heart for the House, where we just want to really look at taking care of this house. And we hear too many people say, oh yeah, but, but we, you know, God isn't, the church isn't the building. We are the, pe- we are the church. And that is true. But once again, we do reside in a place. And just like each of you would care for your home and would care for your house or wherever it is you live, we as a family need to realize that we have a responsibility to care for our house. And God dwells in us but yet this is the place we want to be responsible for. And so um, Florida, as we said, we want to start something through the month of March called Heart for the House. And Florida here, we have a lot of things in our building that are broken or worn out or almost worn out, (laughs) almost broken. We have done church on the smallest budget I have ever seen. And uh, we have a team of staff that have made things work that should have never worked. We actually have technicians who own companies who service other churches who call our team members saying, how in the world did you do it so cheap? Because it's impossible. So we have done with things. uh, We have been good stewards of everything God's given us, but there are things that are just wearing out. We had to just replace this projector because it was getting to the point where you could hardly see it. Uh, Kids' projectors are almost dead. They're like 95% dead. 
and uh, which is why we've been replacing TVs in some of the rooms, etc. We're trying to find efficient ways to do what we have to do to reach our community and service our family, but things are wearing out. Uh, we have um, we have a, a serious roof leak, and we've tried patching it for the last few years. There's no hope for that anymore. It is it's pretty much done. Uh, we need new scent, we need new speakers, etc. We've slowly been able to replace some of the sound system and tech, etc. Over the last couple of years, but it still definitely needs a lot more. Um, our bathroom floors are worn out. There's glue coming up through it, so if you're sticking to it, it's that's why it's not because our our cleaning girl's not doing her job. She is, but it's just, it's too old. It's coming up. Um, one of the other things is our playground has had some safety issues, uh, and it's getting worn out. We haven't done really anything to the playground area, but we really feel that we need to, uh, to do some um, do some repair and even replace some of the stuff that's there that's, uh, that's no longer functional. Some of our walls are needing paint. When we painted this building, we actually got a whole bunch of free paint, put it in garbage cans, stirred it all together, and that was the color that went on the walls. <laughs> so, <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not. We are serious. So, um, we've done a lot on little, but it's really time to bring God's excellence um, to, our, to our, our home. Our living room, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful that we've had thrift stores and donations and everything in there has been done for free, but it's getting worn out, it's getting stained, it's getting ripped, it's, um, it's, every, it's, it's just in a tired place. And we just really believe that it is time to go to a new level. I believe like even in the spirit realm as we're going to a new level, and as we're talking about his presence and his presence filling this place, that we want to be good stewards of his yeah. presence and of his home and represent excellence. As we go into excellence in the spirit realm, we also want to go to excellence in the physical realm, which means taking care of things. I believe our living room, it's a place for people to first be welcomed. It should look good. It should look better than what we've, we've been able to do stuff so far, but we want to go to a new level, which means redoing some of these things. With Easter coming, we want to just get our house ready. And how many of you, if you have company coming, you want to spruce up your house a little bit, right? We want to do the same thing for our house. So for the month of March, we want to do Heart for the House. And uh, we just want to start taking up offerings that can really help us um, get things accomplished here. Um, projects we're aiming for by, e uh, by Easter is some new furniture for the living room. And here we do have some opportunities for some deep, deep discounts on some stuff right now, which is why we're, we're jumping on this. We can do it for a lot less than it would be able to do it a couple months from now. So that's what we're wanting to do. Uh, building repairs, March 14th, we're doing a patch the building so we could use some help, painting, etc., cleaning up outside. That's what we want to do for Easter. In our long-term plan, we want to do some things. We want to be able to put a cafe in the living room so you can get specialty coffees and, and pastries and stuff like that. We'll still have the free coffee and donuts, no worries. Um, but I know especially our younger generation loves the whole Starbucks thing, and, and so we'd be putting that in there, as well as um, the new playground. Now, the new playground, you know, it is a safety issue. The playground alone, though, is going to cost us probably twenty-five dollars to $30,000 to put a new one out. We cannot move ahead with that project without the funds coming in for it. So if the funds do not come in through the month of March, we will have to just patch it, which will maybe last a year. But we really believe that our kids um, deserve more. And it is a great thing for the community, too, because the community comes over to our church. We show love by letting them have a great place to play with their kids, everything else. It becomes an outreach tool. So we believe it's worth investing into. Um, but once again, plan A is the money comes in. <laughs> and I believe some of you can just, you know, I think there's, you know, five or eight of you that could just strike a, a check for a few thousand and be able to cover that and we could get it done. Some of you can give the labor to help us put it together. But that is one of our things that we're going for. Um, and if you are wanting to give towards the playground, we're going to be doing general maintenance and general projects and then we're also going to have a, a thing for playground. So if you're wanting to contribute strictly to the playground, put playground on your offering envelope. But the new floors in the bathroom and um, lobby. We want to do this. Now, I think you've got a picture. Have you got a picture for us? This is really cool. My staff brought this to me. I had never seen this. This is called a penny floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, isn't that cool? It's, do we have another shot of it or not? Just the one? Okay. 
It is actually really, really a cool effect, and it's actually a lot cheaper than doing any other tiling or anything like that. But that means we need your pennies. So we actually need 300,000 pennies. <laughs> yes, we do. In Canada, you can't use pennies anymore, so we want your pennies. How cool would it be for us to have Canadian pennies in our floor as well? So start bringing your pennies. We're going to have a thing next weekend to start collecting them. And yeah, there you go. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And then we need labor to do it. But anyhow. <laughs> and I said, I want everything heads up. No, that would just be crazy. <laughs> All my staff would quit. But no, we're we're going for this, and we're just going to really present. We're going to do. We're going to spruce up. We want to show excellence. We want to be faithful with what God's given us. Uh, we are, you know, virtually. We we have very minimal debt on this building or in our ministry, and we want to be able to stay that way. So we want to be able to just take this up. But I do believe um, that oh, in Winnipeg too. Can you I go talk there? To yeah. yeah. I, you know, we started Winnipeg uh, with without fundraising, without going to people for money, and I. And I know a lot of people say, you can't do that. And we said, well, we just did what God said to do. We were able to send a bunch of stuff from the stores and extra stuff we had from here to help them get set up. But we still had to do some construction. And so we, we, we ran it to about uh, fifteen or $20,000 worth of setup costs. And to set up a church, that's like almost insignificant. But what we would really like to do is to be able to get that debt paid off so that we're not um, making payments on that every month and that we can get ahead on that. So Winnipeg, I really want to encourage you, if you can put 1000 or $2,000 uh, or 5000 or maybe God speaks and you write the whole check um, to help us just get this paid off because the church can only go as far as the people behind it that are helping support it. And so we want to encourage you, be part of something. God is not only doing something really significant here in this Bradenton, Sarasota area of Florida, but God is also using Winnipeg. Winnipeg is the center of the nation of Canada, actually of North America. And God, uh, the, some of the major revivals that broke out happened right in that city. And I really believe God's going to revisit it, and he's going to take that that the source church in Winnipeg and spread it across the nation and, and touch the, the churches there. Does that mean we're going to all those churches? No, but that gives us an opportunity to influence and, and help them as they develop as well, as well. So throughout the month of March, we're asking that you help us care for our home. And I think each one of us can be part of it. Just like in a home, I have, you know, there's seven of us that live in our house. Everyone has a task. Everyone has something to do in our home because we are a family. And maybe some of you can only give $50, but I believe many of you can give $1,000 or more or $5,000. But I'm going to ask you to prayerfully consider what can you do to just take care of our home. And um, as well as we're going to have some work days, etc., to manually jump in. But I really encourage you financially, let's support the house. Let's take care of it. And um, we're going to do the offering up later. You can just add um, building or playground to the offering envelope and put an amount. But we really would love if everyone would just help us take care of our home. So thank you for that. We are, thank you for listening to our heart in that. We don't normally do fundraising things, campaigns like this, but we really, really feel like um, as we're moving to a new level that each one of us needs out of our heart just to serve God and honor him for what he's doing in our church and um, to be part of doing this together. Well, we're, we're not going to have time to get to this. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. So um, you can either stay for second service and if we get our sermon done then, or uh, we'll get you the CD next week, but um, we're not going to get to this next part. But we do are going to go into communion, and I really believe God's going to do some special things here in communion. Yeah. And um, if you guys can hand it out. One of the big things about communion is that it's a time where we honor what Jesus did. And um, just let me read it, and then I'm going to explain to you what communion all means and um, how we take it. 1 Corinthians 11, it says, let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is another word for communion and why it is so centrally important. 
I received my instructions from the master himself and passed them on to you. The master Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread. Having given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. This cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. What you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat this bread and every time you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and actions the death of the master. You'll be drawn back to this meal again and again until the master returns. You must never let familiarity breed contempt. You know, I think a lot of times for some of us, we, it's community, we can make it ritual and we can just say, well, this is what we're going to do. But when we get a, really, get a real revelation of who God is and what he did for us. And I want to use Peter as an example. Because Peter was one of the crazy disciples that would get out of the boat. He would do, he would speak first. He would get, stick his foot in his mouth all the time. And Jesus loved him. And I remember the, the, the night that Jesus was betrayed. Now, Jesus knows what is coming on him. And he's explaining to his disciples, he said, listen, I want you to know something. Every one of you are going to bail on me. Now, these were 12 of his closest friends. Judas was already slipped out and he was on his way to sell him out for 30 pieces of silver. Peter looks at him and he says, Jesus, I don't know about all these other yutzes, but me... You can count on me. I'm not going anywhere. So as they went to the garden to pray, then eventually the guards came to arrest Jesus. And Peter pulled out his sword and swung at the head guard. He wasn't aiming for his ear. Come on, somebody. He was trying to take his head off, his shoulders. Peter pulled his sword out and signed his own death sentence. See, when the police come to arrest you and you pull out a sword to chop their head off, come on, somebody. And Jesus quickly dissolves that and he heals the guy's ear. Peter, put that away. That's not what we're all about. He gets an instant pardon and Jesus goes in. And then Peter hours later, is cussing out Jesus. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Hours later, he's cussing. See, why am I sharing this? Because some of you and I have been there too. God, where are you? Come on, like, you know what I'm going through. You don't care about me anymore. Well, here was Peter brought on his old sailor cussing. Come on, somebody. And starts cussing out Jesus and all of a sudden the rooster crows and Jesus said, hey, watch, this is what's going to happen. Jesus taking on the weight of the world all by himself, even his closest buddies bailed on him. Peter tried, but he went about it the wrong way. You know, it wasn't three days later that Christ arose and said, go find Peter. Peter, do you love me? Oh, man, could you imagine that? A couple days earlier, inside of a week, he's cussing out Jesus. Peter, do you love me? Well, Lord, I know I love you. But he asks him three times. Peter must have been like, come on, God, seriously. This is so painful. He says, I'm going to use you to build my church. Wait a minute, he was the guy that was denying Jesus, cussing at him, swinging the, the sword out to take somebody's head off. God says, I'm not done with you. Are you getting this? For some of you, people have told you God's done with you. God's not done with you. And so this communion time was such a holy time. Because God says, I'm going to change the way things are being done on the earth. I'm going to have love and forgiveness and peace just come. I'm going to, Jesus said, I'm going to literally give up my own life for the sake of people that all hate me and all deserted me because I love them. And you might be sitting there saying, but you don't get where I'm at. Listen, look at where Peter was at. If God can use him to build the church, you're no different. The Bible says, in Christ, we're all the same. 
And God will use each and every one of us. What does that mean for us? It's mean get before God and say, God, forgive me. Lord, people have done stuff to me. Help me to forgive them too. Help me to get things right. If Peter can get it right, Lord, I know there's hope for me. And realize what Christ did as his body was broken, as it was beaten, the Bible says it was he was beat till he was unrecognizable. That was for you and me. Then his blood was given so there would be a full atonement for our sins. So we can come boldly into the throne room of God, the Bible says, and upturn mercy and grace. If you only knew how much he loves you. If you could only get that revelation, you'd be on your knees saying, God, Depart from me, I'm a sinful person. But come into my life and change my life. Make it fresh and make it new. Help me to live for you every day of my life. See, that's really what our heart prayer needs to be. God, I need you. So as we're going into communion right now, if you haven't known him, just pray that prayer. Say, God, come into my life. Jesus, be my Lord. See, that's really what it's all about. He says, I'll exchange all the garbage you have for all the blessings that he has. You have nothing to lose. You have only to gain. I'm going to pray over this communion in a moment. And as their worship team is going to worship, I want you just to get before God. Say, God, am I being where I'm supposed to be? Am I, am I, am I at that area where I'm supposed to be walking right now or am I kind of too far away from you or maybe just come into my life and be my Lord and allow him just to start wrapping his love around you Father we come to you right now we thank you that communion is such a holy time Father it's a time for us to get ourselves right with you again I pray, Lord, that as we take communion divinely from the very presence of heaven, people would sense they are one with you. Let the spirit of the living God just increase and fall fresh on each and every one of us. In Jesus' name. We hope you enjoyed this message. For more free teaching and information about The Source, please go to www.tapintothesource.com.